Let's bring in live now on the program the Deputy Prime Minister, Barnaby Joyce. Thanks for your time. You heard the New South Wales Premier there. He doesn't know why the federal government hasn't chipped in as part of that new job saver they're announcing today. Is the, is the Morrison government penny-pinching here? Uh, no, I think the Morrison... And there's one of our taxpayers crying in the background. Um, the Morrison government has been paid billions and billions and billions of dollars out from job seeker, job keeper, stimulus to the airline industry, uh, continual uh, payment towards, obviously, even concession and cardholder rat tests. It goes on and on and on. Uh, so I don't think it's penny-pinching. I'm, I'm quite happy to look at the amount of money that the Commonwealth has put forward uh, towards New South Wales. Not that I've got a problem with the New South Wales, but I'm quite happy to look forward to uh, comparing how much we've put forward to New South Wales, Queensland and any other state and that what those states have put forward themselves. You're doing well battling on uh, despite the little man having a Sunday morning uh, <laughs> blow up. I'm familiar <laughs> with those. Don't worry about it, uh, Deputy Prime Minister. But when you look at the spending here, this is a drop in the ocean compared to JobKeeper. Why not just do it? We're a couple of months out from the election. Oh, well, Kieran drops in the ocean all that up. You, you get to a point where, you know, it is uh, it is that person screaming who ultimately has to pay pay the bills at one stage and you just can't keep putting things on the credit card over and over and over again. You've got to get to a point where you say, well, we've got to live with this and we've got to move on because the more we pay out on uh, Omicron um, and COVID campaigns, it's less money for NDIS, less money for defence, less money for education, less money for health. You know, it, this is not an unlimited supply, unlimited supply of money. You, you've got to make hard decisions. That's what government's about. And, if every time someone turns up and says, I want money, you give it to them, we, you're going to go out the back door. And uh, our side of politics is supposed to be one that respects the value of money because we respect the people who ultimately have to pay it back, that screaming kid. On another front, the new Chinese ambassador extended the olive branch this past week. This was the reaction from the employment minister, your colleague, Stuart Robert. Have a look. It's wonderful to see the new Chinese ambassador coming forward with a very open approach. And I think they'll find uh, the Australian government's response uh, equally open to ensure dialogue continues strongly. We had a strong relationship with our wonderful uh, Chinese Australians. Remember, the, the, the Chinatown in Melbourne, I think, was the very first Chinatown anywhere in the world. Over one million Chinese Australians and Mandarin, the second most spoken language in Australia. So deep ties uh, with China, especially on our people-to-people -people links. So it's very pleasing to see the new ambassador coming forward. And I, I know I and other ministers are looking forward to a very constructive relationship as we move forward. Stuart Robert there. Now, is it a contradiction that he's so strongly welcoming this olive branch and yet senior ministers like you have had a crack at uh, Anthony Albanese for trying to say we need to balance our concerns with the economic relationship. Well, I think that Mr Albanese said they should remove some of the exemptions and, of course, that poses the question, economic exemptions like you have on barley, like we have on coal, like we have on wine, like we have on many products. And why some? I mean, if you're going to remove exemptions, remove the lot. I mean, what exemptions... Mr Albanese, do you believe need to stay in place? As I said, when you when you wash the dishes, do you just wash some of them? You know, get get half dressed. Uh, it, it's not what we do. We if we want to get back to normal a normal economic relation. Then we can't can't have China sort of arbitrarily putting, ex, you know, quarantining, uh, putting bans on products when we haven't actually broken any. Do you law agree with Stuart and Robert? Do you welcome that new approach? I welcome any approach by uh, China that wants to uh, basically turn things down a bit. Obviously, I, I bear that in mind and in balance with such things as what's happening in the South China Sea and uh, what's happening with uh, Peng Shui, with what's happening with freedom of media in for the people of Hong Kong who, who are now firmly under Chinese rule. I, 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 yes, I, I want there to be peace, but I will do it with eyes wide open um, and making sure... I'm only this relationship, but but not in the frame of naivety, and, and I don't think that's what Stuart Roberts was doing at all. He was um, encouraging a better relationship, and that's what I would want as well. One of your party rooms, Sam McMahon, has resigned. She's resigned from the CLP, but she sits with the Nats. That's not a great look as we're just a couple of months out from the election, as I said. What are the implications of her now 
not sitting with the Nationals. Well, Sam McMahon remains part of the government, and that's very, very important. She remains part of the government. My leadership team, uh, myself, Kay Hull, uh, the President of the Nationals, um, Jamie, President of the CLP in uh, the Northern Territory, and also uh, in conversations with Sam, we've discussed this issue. Uh, Sam will remain as a member of the government in the in the Nationals room, and uh, uh, probably as an independent, I'd say, but. Um, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, something very close to the end of the end of uh, Parliament before we go to an election. So, uh, you okay. know, I don't think this is a, a, a dramatic issue. All right. Let's uh, look at something that is a bit of a dramatic issue. That's the rapid antigen tests. Do you regret saying people were hoarding them? Well, some of them are. And that's the issue. I mean, that, that's just a matter of fact. And I'm sure... Even you would know people who've who bought more than they need. Uh, that's but that, there are bigger issues at play, aren't there? Shouldn't the government? Well, there are, more other, there are certainly other big issues at play. But if you say deny that rat rat tests are being hoarded at all, well, that to deny it would would be I'd have to lie because people are and 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 business, businesses are and we've got to yeah you know, that that's it's just like people hoard toilet paper and hoard other things. I don't know why they do that, but it. If you're going to say that that doesn't happen as well, of course it does. And um, what we've got to, what we are doing is we're bringing in millions of rat tests now. Uh, that they're well, I think, and even the concession card holders, there's like I think 2,400 chemists and have delivered out about 400,000 uh, rat tests. I think that's you know off the off the from the back of my head. Um, and that's what we continue to do. We're bringing in millions. We'll come in in January, and and I think about thirty three million in, in February are coming in. So you, you manage these things, Kieran, as you go along. You and you, you you find these rat tests. We're finding them. Obviously, they're they're, they're made in Australia, but they're made around the world. And our problems are no not much different to any other country's problems. We're all we're all desperately trying to, okay. to find these tests, and make them available. Do, can you understand why people were Frustrated, though, hearing that from you? They, 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 like you're trying to divert the blame? Uh, well, if they're frustrated, I apologise for that. But the issue is if they're saying they're frustrated because people are hoarding them, well, that's a problem that you have to take up with the people who are hoarding them. And uh, and, they, and that is one issue. I'm not saying it's every issue, but it's most certainly an issue. Okay. An, okay. an issue. Everything else that happens now in the, the supermarket, we have to be careful with. This week, the, we, the Prime Minister announced a, a billion dollars in funding for the Great Barrier Reef. Only one brief mention of climate change. Do you accept that climate change is the biggest threat to the reef? Well, I, I think that uh, we have a billion... Well, yes, look, you, this is one of those things where people sort of, you know, you've got to say climate change in every second word you say. I say climate change is a major threat to the reef. Um, the biggest threat to the reef? Well, OK, it's the biggest threat to the reef. Well... Uh, I accept that. But a lot of this money goes towards controlling effluent runoff, uh, making sure that uh, we, we monitor agricultural runoff. We work with farmers, not against farmers, work with farmers to uh, try and, and bring a better outcome. Because a billion dollars, why do I say that? So before the banshees go crazy and get on Twitter, the reason I say that a billion dollars is not going to fix climate change, OK? It's, it's going to cost vastly, vastly more than that. Yeah. So really the billion dollars appropriate is towards trying to do things more on a localised level for a better health of the reef. We've got to go. Just one last question. The government's not in a great spot at the moment. The Prime Minister has lost a fair bit of paint over the summer, hasn't he? Look, it's a tough time. You know, what, other, what other Prime Ministers have had to deal with a, a pandemic? And I think the Australian people ultimately are going to have to make a choice uh, between secure management proven management, economic management, or um, Mr Albanese, who's one person in Mackay, another person in Melbourne, one person in Gladstone, another person in Grainler. And in between times, it's just, you know, just this whinging, whining commentary about how terrible we all are. I, I want to hear his positive message about the roads he's going to build, the dams he's going to build, uh, about uh, how what his views are for agriculture. I want to see the agriculture minister up against our agriculture minister. I want to see their defence minister up against Peter Dutton. I want to see their, you know, their view of uh, of of where they their individual ministers lining up against our individual ministers, and then the Australian people right. can make a choice because the cabinet system of government. We've got to go, but. Um... 
Congrats on the engagement as well to you and Vicky. Talk to you soon. I'll lend you my kids from time to time if you want them. <laughs> Busy with my own. I'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it, Deputy Prime Minister.